Magandang araw po mga kaibigan. Isang magandang pagkakataon itong mapag-usapan ng mga maiinit na isyu may kinalaman po naman sa ating bansa at sa mga nasa larana ng pamamahayag. We'd like to begin with uh, an introduction from Ariel Civilino. Siya pong Executive Director ng Philippine Press Institute na makakabalikat natin sa mga talakayan mula ngayon at sa kada ikatlong miyerkules ng bawat buwan. Ariel? Good morning everyone. Kuya Melo, good morning. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng dumalo ngayon sa virtual forum na ito. A first of the monthly roundtable that will run from July to December. And we'd like to thank the Hans Seidel Foundation for its full support for the PP activities. Uh, shout out to Mr. Gax Heineke, the resident representative uh, of the Hans Seidel Foundation, Carol Lee, and also the ambassador for being here. The PPI has always been on the side of press freedom. It cannot be otherwise. Whether it issues its own position or supports a collective stand, it will always be consistent with its mandate. That is the protection of press freedom. It is against any form of curtailment. Having said that, with the authority and permission from the PPI chairman, we would like to reiterate our stand against the anti-terror law and our condemnation on the non-renewal of the ABS-CBN franchise. Maraming salamat po. Back to you, Kuya Melo. We'd like to have a few words from our friend from Hans Seidel Foundation. Uh, but do I get it right that uh, Her Excellency would also share her views? Ariel, please welcome our guest this morning. Good morning. Is, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm already um, um, uh, invited to say a few words or whether... Yes. Yes, yes, of Ambassador, yes. Your okay. Excellency, welcome. Thank you very much. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much to the Hans Seidel Foundation and to um, all the um, participants. Um, the Philippines is not a country you can find in the German press and the media every day. Only a few topics from the Philippines uh, make it to the German newspapers usually. But the new Anti-Terror Act is one of them. The so-called war on drugs, which has been declared a priority by President Duterte, is being critically observed by the German as well as by other European international governments. I think I don't have to mention here um, the resolution on the human rights situation in the Philippines um, that was made by the, human, by the UN Human Rights Council um, last year, as well as the very recent debate on the human rights situation in the Philippines last month on the basis of the report provided by the High Commissioner. Um, this report also critically refers to the press freedom in the Philippines and to the uh, anti-terror bill, which uh, in the meantime was signed by President Duterte and which will enter into, into force on Sunday. Um, although it is important to acknowledge the fact that the new law addresses some fundamental gaps of the previous anti-terror legislation, some of the uh, provisions have triggered widespread criticism and at least eight petitions have been filed before the Supreme Court. The Philippine government has repeatedly stated that it made sure that there are sufficient safeguards against potential misuse of the law. This is particularly important with regard to civil society, human rights activists and advocates. At the same time, we, the international community, will continue to observe the implementation and the application of the new law and maintain the dialogue on the human rights situation as well as on other relevant topics covered by the um, by the report of on, uh, of the of the um, Human Rights Council, as well as topics uh, covered by the uh, anti-terror law, um, the dialogue on this with all stakeholders here in the Philippines. The media has a critical role in this regard, since they are frontliners when it comes to critical observation, balanced and objective reporting. Um, um, and um, 
accompanying the, the situation we, we find here on the ground. I therefore hope that uh, this roundtable provides valuable opportunity for exchange and dialogue and for continued uh, cooperation. Um, I'm happy um, to be able to attend this roundtable to, to get an insight and an overview on, on the thoughts and the ideas and the, and the um, observations you have made so far uh, and your reflections on the, on the new anti-terror law. Um, and uh, I hope we will um, have the opportunity to have a continued uh, dialogue on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. And uh, we really value what you said. Uh, you know, uh, it's important that some people would also take a look on what's happening inside. So for a more objective uh, point of view. Ariel, your turn. I, uh, at this point, I'd like to call the very supportive friend from uh, HSF who has been uh, with us to take and thin um, since they started supporting people activities three years ago, four years ago, uh, up to this day, please welcome uh, the resident representative. I already mentioned his name, Mr. Gus Heineke. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Good morning. Um, the, the Hans Adel Foundation is a German and NGO with the goal to build up democracy and, and good governance. And for us, well-informed journalists are essential and are, and are key player for democratic and, and peaceful development. And that's already the, the reason why we, we are supporting through PPI uh, civic journalism here in the Philippines and why we are happy um, for, for this activity this morning. And we are looking forward for some, some uh, rich for, uh, for information about the anti-terror bill. And without losing too much time, uh, thank you very much and let's have a good and good exchange. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Napapanahon na po na ipakilala ko ang ating mga panauhin din na magbibigay na kanila mga pananaw sa mga nagaganap ngayon at kung ano ang maaring maganap sa mga susunod na panahon. Kasama po natin si Jamela Alindogan, ang Pangulo namin sa Foreign Correspondents Association of the Philippines, si Professor Danilo Araw ng UP College of Mascom, si Attorney Romel Bagares na dating Executive Director ng Center Law, at uh, isa pong uh, dalubhasa sa larangan ng international law. Si Brigadier General Bernard Banak, tagapagsalita ng Philippine National Police. Si Professor Clarita Carlos ng UP. Kasama po natin si Ginoong Nono Espina ng NUJP. Si Ginoong Vergel Santos na dati pong chair ng uh, Business World at isang columnist ngayon ng Rappler. At si Raymond Villanueva ng Kodao Productions. Isa pong editor at reporter. Let's start. Siguro si Jamela sapagkat siya ay nasa labas ngayon at naroon sa Subic. Jamela, what are your thoughts about the anti-terror law and uh, the media? Yes, Jam. Good morning. There you go. Good morning po, um, Melo. It's so nice to see you again. Apologies as I'm on the road on assignment. I'm Jamela. I'm the President of the Foreign Correspondents Association of the Philippines and now correspondent of Al Jazeera. Melo and I both sit in the board of FOCAP this year. Um, I'll leave all the quickly lang because um, I'll leave all the, the legalities and all the fundamental gaps as, as mentioned for others to, to talk about, you know, and I'll focus on our important role as journalists when we cover anything in relation to anti-terror law. I mean, we've seen those who have covered conflict in the past, Melo, know that very, very quickly, journalists may be used as fodder for propaganda by any side, right? This is why, for example, for us, for me, uh, we don't even the use, we don't even use the word terrorist in our reports because there is this belief that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. We use that word terrorist when we're attributing it uh, from someone or somebody who is in power or in government. Um, it is important for journalists to understand the important role of navigating this very difficult minefield of, of, of the anti-terror law and the stories that go with it. Um, 
like I said, the legal loopholes will be discussed by others. Uh, the, 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 the main difficulty about this anti-terror law is how anyone can quickly be labeled uh, a terrorist. I think this loose labeling of, this loose labeling of, of, of uh, the, 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 the loose, uh, very easy use of the word terrorist is problematic and journalists should be careful uh, when it comes to attributing these, this label. Um, we know those who have covered Marawi, how quickly things can turn around. Um, we know that red tagging can also affect anyone. And so the important role is for, the important thing is for journalists to understand that now that the anti-terror law has been passed, anyone can, can fall victim to it, even those covering it. So we need to be very careful when we do our stories. There has to be a lot of validation that we should not simply uh, allow this labeling or the use of red tagging. I mean, this this happens a lot, Melo. Makikita naman natin yan, di ba? So, yung malaking pag-iingat uh, dun sa paggamit nito, dun sa pag-cover nito. And of course, um, um, at the end of the day, to understand na napakahirap na na position ito because we don't know how how it can be weaponized. We've seen, you know, the cyber the cyber law and the libel laws weaponized against journalists, and it remains to be seen whether the anti-terror law will also be weaponized. Um, we had this discussion last week, and I believe that government should review if there is a chance soon how it's implemented and that it should be improved, um, that, that the government should be open to um, adjustments of, of, of its implementation of how it's going to, ano, kasi mar maraming problema dun sa issue ng inciting to sedition and all of those causes, it can easily be turned against you. So I think right now the very important role of journalists is to make sure that we remain child, that we don't become father for propaganda. We've seen that in Marawi. We've seen that during the drug war. You know, uh, the mere use of drug suspects, drug users. The, 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 this, these things did not happen overnight. The anti-terror law did not happen in a vacuum. You know, there were things that were happening for the past few years with, the, with government policies, with approaches, with even how we handle our coverage that allowed for this to be passed. So I hope that, you know, within the next few months, government will be much more open in reviewing based on how it's implemented, its effectivity. And we know, as mentioned by Sidney Jones last week during our forum, there is not a single anti-terror law anywhere in the world that has become effective. You know, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, when we speak of terrorism, we have to first speak of uh, solving terrorism. We have to first talk about um uh, fixing and uh, social injustice because the root of terrorism is social injustice. We've seen that in Mindanao, um, and 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 I think the most important role of journalists is to dig deeper and to go through um, all uh, uh, is to dig deeper and to remember that at the end of the day, you know, anti-terror law or the terrorism or whatever as they call it, a rebellion, is basically just a symptom of a much bigger problem. Okay. So we need to dig deeper in our stories and understand that, you know, mas malaki yung role ng journalist ngayon, more than ever, now that the anti-terror law is passed. Thank you, Jamela. And have a safe trip to Bajo de Masinlo. Attorney Romeo Bagares is also with us. Tell us briefly, what are the points for concern at the Pumang Republic Act um, 11479? Romel? Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be part of uh, this conversation. I think it's been well elaborated in uh, different uh, forums uh, that the language uh, in which the uh, couched uh, really leaves much to be desired. No? Uh, the problem is that the definition of terrorism in Section 4 of the law uh, is very broad and could be interpreted in different ways. And, uh, and that's the problem. Uh, in, in our experience, uh, even just in this pandemic, uh, we saw how law enforcement tend to violate first and uh, before explaining later. No? And, and uh, that's really the fear of a lot of people. If you look at how terrorism is defined in uh, Section 4, I'm not just the only one who's uh, making this uh, comment, but even a lot of uh, 
our more senior legal experts who have studied this law, um, um, you, you can see uh, uh, there are parallels, of course, in other jurisdictions. I, I, it's close to the definition of terrorism in Australia. And in Australia, that's also the criticism, the broad uh, way in which uh, terrorism is uh, uh, defined, for instance, uh, uh, the definition having uh, uh, or pen penalizing intention. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you look at the perp, for instance, one of the purposes attributed to terrorism is uh, an act that by its nature and context is to intimidate the general public or, or a segment thereof, create an atmosphere or spread a message of fear to provoke or influence by intimidation, the government or any international organization. And that's uh, anything can, can, can actually be labeled as an intimidate as intimidation uh, we we've seen how government officials say in on different issues that they're being bullied uh in, on social media <laughs> the, precisely this is the problem uh, uh we have a problem with law enforcement uh just uh showing that they can't understand the basic rules of uh, of of law that they're supposed to enforce and you, know, you see that, that, that that's that's the, that's the basic problem really with this law. I have other comments on other provisions, but I think for media this is very important uh, when we talk about uh, free expression because that that's because this directly actually raises uh, danger of of, uh, of a chilling effect. You don't know, uh, you know, someone who interprets a law enforcement uh, agent who looks at this and scans Twitter, scans Facebook, and then suddenly says, oh, this is an intimidating post. And this actually is directed at someone, a government official, uh, being criticized. Okay. And that official also confirms that he's being bullied for the stance that is taken on an issue. Thank you, Melo. So, uh, in a capsule, what you're saying is this law poses a danger, not only for ordinary folks, but for journalists as well, right? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, because uh, they're reporting on, on, on an issue and they are, of course, carrying the uh, or reporting on the messages that are uh, being said by different sectors on a particular issue. And they could be prosecuted for that, for spreading, because it says here, no? spread a message of fear. And intentions really, uh, I think for legal scholars, that's what they call the confusion between motive and uh, uh, motive and fault. No? It's a te technical term, no? but a lot of legal scholars really raise this issue on a common, a common objection they raise about terrorism legislation across jurisdictions is this confusion be between fault and motive. And the problem is that the, mot the motive is often interpreted or misinterpreted by law enforcement, whether really, uh, wittingly or unwittingly, it's irrelevant because there's already a violation and you know, the, the penalty for terrorism is life in prison without parole. That's really scary. And, and you can be convicted for that under Section 4. Okay. Thank you. Uh, from the academe, let's hear from uh, our good friend, Professor Clarita Carlos, who used to be president of the National Defense College of the Philippines. Uh, do you think uh, this law would help uh, the country and the government curb terrorism, uh, Professor? Um, let me just add to the previous uh, remarks already made uh, by uh, your resource persons. Um, actually, it will add to the confusion. You know, in the literature, there are more than 100 definitions of the word terrorism. Even the UN could not find a working definition, although they have one there in uh, some of their documents, but even that there is no consensus that that should be the definition. From the definition alone, you can see that uh, there will really be many confusion. Now you go to the heart of the law, which is the, has now been signed. And indeed, there are many, many verbs there, which are, uh, significant of intentions or motivations. And in the social sciences, when you talk of that aspect of behavior which is intentional, intended, or motivated by, we call them landmines in research. In other words, it's very, very difficult 
to operationalize just what it means if you have um, achievement motivation, uh, 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 power motivation, and the like. Even among social scientists, um, there will be disagreement in regard to what the operational definitions of these terms are. And then in regard to who is going to decide who is going to be uh, you know, picked up and interrogated for X number of days, uh, which again, as the lawyers here in the group uh, would note, would go beyond, would contravene what is in the constitution immediately. The people who are going to make this decision, life or death decision, are, they're not even required to be lawyers. Uh, you know, it's, uh, there's an executive secretary. It's like the law was contoured in favor of the people who wrote this, uh, uh, this law, this bill. Uh -huh. and so, and of course, even if it's signed by the president, uh, it has to have an IRR. I'm sure this would be a real, I mean, they'll have not only a bloody nose, but blood will ooze out of all their orifices because it's very, very difficult to really operationalize all those terms in this 63 uh, page uh, law. Very yeah. difficult. I should know because I had participated in writing IRRs and it's a monumental task. Uh, Professor Carlos, briefly, do you think this law was crafted to protect whoever sits in power these days? Uh, let us assume that uh, we give them the benefit of the doubt that uh, they really want to stave off um, terrorist acts, which may not come from the domestic, but may come from the external environment. But, you know, good intentions, um, they're not enough. Um, to in the architecturing of this law. And if you will notice, the House of Representatives simply photocopied the Senate version, which means it did not even go through some, you know, even pretend deliberations. They just, uh, the comma, the colon, the semicolon, they just said, uh, okay, the Senate version, it goes. And it's a very, very delicate law because as we said earlier, the word terrorism uh, Jamela is correct. Uh, we really uh, are very circumspect whenever we use that label because that label is laid, is so pregnant with political meaning because okay. the word terrorist, who is a terrorist, it has more than 100 definitions. Okay. The word terrorist is more than 100 too. So where are we on this? So uh, you're really swimming in a quagmire here. All right. So uh, there's truth to the saying that the road to hell is paved with politicians, no? <laughs> okay, uh, Berhel, uh, what are your thoughts about this law and about our practice in the profession, Berhel? Good morning. Uh, let me <laughs> let me try to make myself as plain and specific as I can be. Uh, uh, first, this law, taken alone from what it is, meaning looking at the law itself, is frightening enough. But uh, certainly we should look at this law in, uh, in a larger context and perspective, and we should uh, factor in the um, character of this regime. You know, look at who uh, authored the law. The law was authored by a martial law enforcer and a fugitive from the law himself, meaning he is a person who didn't have a, propri a, a um, propriety of place. He should, it was not his place to write any law such as this, for one thing. Now, what particularly jumps at me is the provision that anyone without judicial warrant can be arrested, detained, interrogated, put in jail possibly, for what? For simply uh, having been determined to threaten, you know, simply threaten or uh, propose to commit terrorism, a crime that 
is itself probably undefinable. So, and who are the people who are going to make this kind of trouble for us? These are um, the people in this particular regime. So, looking at it from that viewpoint alone, it gives you a plain enough idea of what sort of uh, trouble you can uh, find yourself in, especially us news people, because it is in the nature of our work that uh, we are dragged into such situations um, that the government would easily um, are determined by its own convenience to be um, to be terrorism. Mm -hmm. This is this is terrible. I mean, I, I, I cannot un understand and look at, I, I've been saying that we should look at this in the context of the character of this ruling regime. This is a draconian one. Look at what it is doing. It is, it is using the pandemic as a distraction for all these things. The pandemic itself is, uh, being dealt with by people who are either in the military or were in the military or military-minded. Look at all these things in that context. And mm -hmm. now you have a terrorist, uh, anti-terrorism law. Okay. I mean, this is, we've never had any such perspective trouble in the life of this country since martial law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's leave it at that with help. Uh, can we hear from Professor Danilo Ara? Professor from the United University of the Philippines, yes. How yeah. do you look at that? Yeah, good morning. Uh, I think the main problem with the anti-terrorism law uh, is that it really is very broad in terms of defining terrorism as uh, already uh, articulated clearly uh, by, the by the previous resource persons. But what worries us uh, all the more is the fact that uh, there is further institutionalization of red baiting. And we have to remember that with regard to red baiting, it's not just the activists and ordinary people uh, who, are who fall victims to it. Uh, we also have journalists and news media organizations uh, that are being red baited. And in fact, one uh, alternative journalist, uh, her name is Frenchy Cumpio, uh, is currently in detention because of uh, her suspected links to alleged, uh, quote-unquote, uh, terrorist organizations. Now, remember, these are journalists. And the NTF LCAC has been quite notorious for branding uh, as a, a communist fronts uh, certain media groups. Uh, we have later on uh, representatives from the alternative media and as well as uh, NUJP uh, who can uh, talk about it some more. But the bottom line here, Melo, is that uh, we see here not just the weaponization, but also the institutionalization uh, of media repression. So we're coming off from the closure of ABS-CBN, the continued harassment against Rappler, and on top of that, we also see the continuing killings of journalists, the most recent of which was uh, Cornelio Pepino, uh, a journalist from Dumaguete City who was killed uh, on May 5, on the very same day that uh, ABS-CBN was closed uh, through a cease and desist order by the National Telecommunications Commission, and two days after the supposed celebration, for lack of a better word, of uh, World Press Freedom Day. Now, Attorney Bagares has already provided uh, a lot of insights on the contents of the anti-terrorism law, Republic Act 11479, but allow me to just cite a particular provision here, which is equally dangerous to journalists. Uh, let me just read it. Publishing an advertisement or propaganda for the purpose of recruiting persons to serve in any capacity in or with such an armed force. So this is part of, uh, you know, uh, the provision under Section 10, Recruitment 2, and membership in a terrorist organization. So in a situation where 
the NTFL CAC uh, is, an, is in a label red tagging la labeling spree. So it becomes possible that uh, through provisions like that, uh, journalists and news media organizations could be accused of uh, recruiting uh, for, for the so-called terrorist organizations just for simply quoting them or citing them as sources of information. So there is a big uh, deal and there, it, this is a very, very big issue uh, in the practice of journalism because uh, in the context of objectivity, uh, directly or indirectly, the government seems to be trying to meddle in media content by discouraging journalists from looking uh, for sources information coming from what it labels to be terrorist groups. So, uh, for now, uh, that would be my comment. Thank you. So, uh, Professor, ang sinasabi mo, uh, katulad ng ginagawa ko sa Bicol ng araw, uh, pag meron akong interview sa NPA, pwede na rin akong makasama doon sa mga NPA, gano'n? Exactly. So, that's the problem. Uh, sometimes you, be, you could become a uh, guilty by association because of the broad term. Uh, if you publish a particular article that uh, might include, you know, certain quotes from the NPAs, the CPP, the NDF, and maybe other uh, even legal uh, groups uh, that are branded, let's say, by LCA, by NTF LCAP as a terrorist group, then you might be prone to such accusation. Because uh, as, as Attorney Bagares mentioned a while ago, the term intimidation and provocation of government uh, can be interpreted either way. So that's where the weaponization comes in and that's why it's very, very dangerous for the practice of journalism or even just simply surviving in the Philippines for that matter. All right. Uh, Nonoy, uh, how is it at NUJP, National Union of Journalists of the Philippines? Please. How are things going for you guys? Nonoy? Uh, well, uh, with regards to the terror law, yes. uh, it's really scary because uh, I think we all know that we are one of those red tag organizations. And uh, we've been on the L NTF LCAC radar uh, for so long. And uh, what's bothering, uh, what's really bothersome about this is that even units of the PNP have been engaging in the same red tagging on their social media accounts. Uh, Former chairs, uh, say Inday uh, Espina, has been uh, uh, tagged in uh, memes posted on PNP uh, uh, stations, uh, stations accounts. Uh, si former chair namin Weng Paraan, and then UJP itself. So, and uh, even uh, up north, uh, Baguio, uh, our director, si Kim, uh, uh, Kimberly. And uh, so it's uh, it's really, you know, it's really bothersome that we're now having a law which will go into effect. When they had na kami, we've already been labeled, we've already been identified. What's next? Who's going to proscribe us? People who are not even lawyers. Tama yung sabi nila kanina. Uh, these are cabinet uh, members uh, who are given the authority that only that the constitution says only judges uh, should uh, should have no? uh, determining who should be arrested and detained. So that is that's a very very uh, scary proposition. Oh, and, uh, ang sabi mo nun ay Hindi pwede yung sinabi, yes. sinabi ni Presidente na kayong mga komunista, terorista, dahil sinabi ko na yun. Hindi po pwede yun. I mean, you go anywhere in the world, you look up any law. No law says that that is, uh, that is right. Mali talaga yun. On the say so, not, not you know, we, we are supposed to be a democracy. And so, in a democracy, no one, not one person, no matter how powerful, should have the ability to do that. Look what happened to ABS-CBN. It was only on one man say so. And look what's happened. So I think uh, yung congressman, it's... No decision naman yung congressman, di ba? Yeah, no, so no. I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nanay, sige. Pakinggan mo na natin yung ating kasama, si Raymond Villanueva ng Kodao. Eh, lagi kayo nasasama dyan. Alternative media. Ano nakikita nyo sa bagong batas ngayon? Salamat, uh, Kuya Melo. Um, well, first, I personally welcome Her Excellency's uh, reference 12 statement that her country and other Europe 
Yes. Same one. Same one. People on potential violations on human rights when it is implemented starting Sunday. The media in general may indeed be victims of fear than possible. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, the media in general may may indeed become victims of feared and possible human rights violations because even under the current Human Security Act of 2007 and under various Philippine governments uh, administrations since media killings and attacks on freedom of expression has gone unabated. It appears that forces behind the passage of this new measure are being emboldened further by the impending implementation of this more draconian law. They are ramping up uh, the red baiting of alternative media outfits, as mentioned by both Danny and Nonoy, setting us up for further attacks, even assassinations. The likes of uh, PCOO Undersecretary Lorraine Badoy and various generals and commands of the armed forces of the Philippines are becoming more rabid in vilifying independent media. Just to cite two examples, again, uh, already mentioned, the PNP in Benguet has very recently red baited venerable community newspaper Northern Dispatch and now trolls, uh, very obviously to me to be directed by pro administration forces, are saying on social media that, uh, that ABS-CBN deserves its closure because it is in bed with the communist uh, ridiculous allegation of monumental proportions. Uh, nakakatakot talaga itong uh, uh, anti-terrorism law na ito. Oh, Raymond, let me ask you a straight question. With or without the anti-terrorism law of 2020, Kodao Productions will still go on with its job? Yes. Uh, uh, yun ang ating uh, commitment, yun ang ating duty and responsibility as journalists. We will try our best to keep on operating. Uh, I'm fighting whatever measures uh, that's being implemented to stifle uh, freedom of expression and press freedom. Okay. Mga kaibigan, kasama rin po natin si Brigadier General Bernard Banak. Mula po naman sa Philippine National Police. Siya po ang tagapagsanta ng uh, PNP. Uh, welcome to the discussions, General Banak. Uh, bilang dagdag pala sa trabaho nyo, hindi lang pala kayo mga ngasiwa sa peace and order. Gaano po katotoo na magbabahay-bahay kayo para maghanap ng may COVID-19 para dalhin sa quarantine centers? Kasama po ba sa trabaho niyo yun? Ah, sandali po. Yeah. All right. Paki-unmute lang po. Ayan, go. Okay. Yes. Oops. Mahina po yung volume. Pakisuyo lang po. Nawala po yung signal ninyo. Baka po yung mikropono ay nakasarado. Yan. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, kaya meron. No? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, good morning to everyone, to all the uh, participants of the uh, roundtable discussion. Um, yes, uh, the PNP is being tapped to help in uh, locating uh, all positive cases in uh, COVID-19 um, to... Uh, be, to be brought to quarantine facilities and uh, this is for uh, to further uh, improve our fight against COVID-19 so uh, the PNP is uh, ready to assist our uh, health authorities uh, in uh, locating all these uh, positive cases. It's not supposed to be your job, right? But anyway, uh, general. Y yes, yes, uh, yes, Kuya Milo. Um, well, it, it's so often that um, we, we have the manpower and uh, okay. immediately we are available uh, on call and uh, we, we lack the, the number of uh, health workers to really uh, do all these things. And so uh, here we are. We have a task, we have a mandate to assist in uh, maintaining public safety. So we are uh, making ourselves available to help our health authorities. All right. Now, let me go to the topic this morning. Uh, how does the Philippine National Police look at the anti-terrorism law of 2020? Uh, how do you plan to implement it? Especially, how would the media uh, uh, do its job? Please. 
yes, uh, uh, on the part of the law enforcement, we, we uh, welcome the approval of this uh, anti-terror law. And uh, well, we, we value the, the comments, the criticisms, and the opinion of uh, everyone. But uh, really, on the fight against terrorism, uh, we really have to empower our law enforcement to be able to respond to this uh, global problem on terrorism. Um, we are one with our people in really protecting the, um, the rights of our people. We are in a democracy and the rights of our people are enshrined in our constitution. But uh, being in the law enforcement, um, we really need uh, we really need to empower uh, to enable our law enforcement to respond to this uh, um, developing uh, threat against terrorism. But uh, the legalities and all the uh, questions to raise, uh, we leave it to the to the experts to really determine uh, all this. And uh, we are just uh, awaiting for the IRR the um, implementing rules and regulation so that we will be properly guided. Um, we are not just uh, ready yet to implement the law without the IRR. Uh, we need that so that our personnel, our troops will be properly guided. And uh, this is the assurance that we can give to our people that we are only after the, uh, the safety and protection of our people. And uh, we, we assure we assure our public that uh, all the measures in place uh, to protect the rights of our people uh, will be observed by the, the law enforcement. And we will be uh, there to, to uh, protect our public against the threat of, uh, of uh, terrorism. So that's uh, for the part of the, the, the law enforcement. Okay, thank you very much, General. Marhel, I know you wanted to say something. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Gusto ko lang itanong kay General. How do they propose to determine whom to pick up from their homes for quarantining? You know? uh, in, in this case, um, how about those people? How do they determine who, who are... Um, who should be who should be in 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 effect because alam mo this is you know this this is shades of terrorism eh? when people policemen and security service people come to your home and tell you you are asymptomatic or you are pre symptomatic or you have symptoms of covid so we take you out we put you in quarantine how do they determine that tell me okay that is the yeah. question Yes, General. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, before we, we come to, to a specific house, um, we need to have the, uh, the assistance first of the uh, health authorities, our local um, uh, health workers. Uh, it's really up to them to determine who are those who are uh, having a positive cases in COVID-19. And uh, um, when we go to a house, of course, we have to let the health workers do their task first. Um, actually, the PNP will, ju will just be there to uh, ensure that uh, there, is, there will be order. But as for, in so far as those who will uh, really uh, come into the house and then interview or probably talk to, the, to those patients, uh, we leave it to the health workers because, uh, you know, um, uh, it is not within the... Uh, the capacity of the PNP to determine who are those um, positive uh, for mm -hmm. COVID-19. I, I, am, I am confused. I am confused here. I thought ang walang capacity yung health workers eh. Na ang may capacity yung security services. You just said that you were doing this job because the health, there were not enough health workers to do it. Now you right. are telling me that the uh, the the the, uh, the military and the police and the other security services have no capacity for certain things. I mean, this pandemic by itself is being dealt with by a uh, by a uh, by a group of people who either were in the military, are in the military, or military minded. Why is a pandemic being dealt with 
in a military way. I can't quite understand this. And you are saying that possibly because the health workers, the health community does not have the capacity to do it themselves. I, I am a little confused here. Uh, how do you determine that? Lalo yung asymptomatic, yung walang ipinakikitang symptoms. Paano ang gagawin? Don't you realize, but your mere presence in a community, a mere presence of, of security service people in a community would be by itself frightening and okay. would have certain shades of, 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 of arbitrariness and terrorism. Virgil, baka mawala yung lagnat pag may nakita na ka-uniforme, no? <laughs> well, um, we, we understand. We understand the apprehension, you know. Uh, but it's just happened that we have the, the numbers and uh, we are able to immediately uh, distribute ourselves and uh, help our local health workers uh, locate uh, all these uh, positive cases. And, uh, you know, our health workers right now, um, they are overworked and uh, they don't even have time to rest. So we are here to assist our health workers uh, to locate all these positive cases and then bring them over to our health facilities. Paano ngayon yan kung meron, ang dala ninyo, eh, you are supposed to carry uh, evidence of um, infection, di ba, bago kayo pumunta sa isang lugar. Eh, ang daming mistesting. Paano yan, ano? May dala kayo yung pala mistested. Uh, now, I, I, am, I am playing devil's advocate here. Um, it could be used as a pretext for picking up someone. Di ba? Kasi sabihin nyo, ito may, may symptom. I'm just playing ano, devil's advocate here. Ha? Because that's a very, a very real possibility. Okay. Pareho lang yan ng red tagging eh. Okay. May tanong nga dito eh. Uh, paano raw po kung itinuro lang ng kagalit at sabihin may COVID? Uh, parang, parang shades of tokhang ito eh. Meron daw na, na biktima sa tokhang. Binulong lang sa barangay captain. Hindi kursunada ng barangay captain na biktima. Paano yun? Yes, uh, Kuya Milo, we, we really have to uh, uh, be careful on this matter because uh, we don't want to be accused also of uh, just arbitrarily uh, identifying persons uh, who are positive, COVID positive. So uh, uh, in this case, we really have to uh, seek the help of our local health workers so that we will be assisted and uh, um, we will be uh, properly guided on how to uh, respond to this uh, yung mga sumbong, mga tawag na ganito. And um, uh, there will be, so that there will be order, no? And um, we know, baka maging situation nito magkakagulo, magkakagalit yung mga sa barangay, no? Mm -hmm. So, um, the PNP is there to, to maintain order. But uh, really, uh, we need the help, of course, of, of by the health authorities. Okay. Ang problema rito, strategic, strategic testing eh. Hindi basta test lang ng test. I-test mo ang community, malalaan mo kung sino meron. Pero hindi yeah. mo kailangang dalin ang pulis o military para gawin yan eh. Basta tama ang uh, properly strat, uh, strategic ang testing. Alam mo kung saan ka nagtetest. Alam mo kung saan ka nagtetrace. Hindi mo kailangan ng, ano, ang, ang, not even the face of any security service agent. Okay. Hindi mo kailangan eh. Yeah. Uh, Professor Araw, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yes. Uh, to Brigadier General Banak, uh, simple lang naman po yung tanong sa pagkakataong ito. Uh, what is the assurance that uh, this particular house-to-house -house, uh, uh, initiative uh, would not be used uh, against uh, people uh, with uh, legitimate grievances against the government because right now, uh, given the track record of the police uh, due to alleged uh, human rights violations, not to mention the red tagging that's happening, uh, not in all police stations, but in some of the official Facebook pages of police stations, uh, we see uh, red tagging of activists or even journalists. Now, the concern here, Brigadier General, is that uh, this particular house-to-house -house, uh, 
related to the global pandemic might be used uh, against legitimate dissenters or even uh, journalists themselves. So, ano po ba yung uh, assurance dun sa na hindi ito magagamit at mag-weaponize para po mag-crackdown sa panahon ng lockdown? Right. Um, we understand the, uh, the sentiment. No? Um, but uh, we, we give the assurance that uh, this will not be used to, uh, to uh, to launch a crackdown or uh, to weaponize uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, guideline. But uh, we are really just the health, uh, health authorities to locate uh, positive cases and uh, bring them over to uh, quarantine facilities. And uh, we will do this very carefully um, with specific guidelines or direction from our local health workers. And uh, when that happens, then that's the only time uh, we will come in. And um, there will be a series of meetings with our counterparts, uh, uh, workers, so that uh, this thing can be ironed out. And uh, you know, uh, all these apprehensions will be. Uh, um, um, we can respond to to them, no? And then, um, yeah, we we give the assurance that the, the rights of our people. Uh, will be protected, and uh, this will not be. Thank you, sir, for the assurance. But uh, as a follow-up question, uh, I'm sure that you've prepared hard for this. Uh, may we know the system of oversight uh, that the PNP will have? I mean, uh, just to be direct to the point, uh, if ever there are certain excesses that are done by your uh, personnel, uh, how will... Uh, you know, ordinary citizens file the necessary complaint against the erring uh, police officer. Thank you, sir. Hello, yes. uh, Melo. Yes, Melo. Right. Melo uh, be, be, before before the general answers, uh, meron ako ng uh, uh, related question, eh. Uh, okay. If I may. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes. Uh oh. Um, I thank the general for his assurances. Pero assurances is. Uh, Piso isang tumpok eh, under this uh, Philippine government. Now, the general is saying that they want to be careful in uh, doing their tasks. And the PNP is there to maintain order. Ang tanong ba natin is, uh, ito ba, are they, will they be as careful and orderly in uh, as wearing LBC courier service uniforms in serving warrants? Oh, oh, pala, oh no? under no. No, under uh, under the current uh, Human Security Act, meron pang isang ayta na inaresto ng police na kailangan bayaran nila ng halos kalahating bilyong piso for being wrongfully uh, arrested and detained. Pero tinanggal ito under the current uh, the, the, the new anti-terrorism law. Uh -huh. Problematic yung batas eh. So kahit na sabihin ng police that they will be careful, uh, lag -lag tayong lahat dito. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the inputs. Yes, General, before I go to uh, Attorney Bagares. Yes, please. Yes, uh, yes, Carmelo, and uh, we, we value the opinion and uh, the, uh, the comment uh, against the PNP. Uh, but as an institution, we are really deeply committed to our, uh, our advocacy for the uh, respect for human rights and uh, upholding the, the rule of law. Well, it's so, it's so happened that uh, this institution is not also perfect. Uh, there, there, there are instances where some of our personnel uh, really commit violations of the law. And we are really committing ourselves to really investigate and identify them and uh, charge them with proper uh, charges, both criminal and administrative charges, um, to, to deal with these uh, violations. But uh, in general, um, all our, well, majority of our cops, our personnel, are law-abiding and uh, respectful of human rights. Um, we just have to deal with all these uh, you know, isolated cases uh, uh -huh. where some of our personnel uh, commit violations. And we deal with them very harshly, and uh, we put them to jail, and uh, so that uh, the, the rule of law uh, will be upheld, and then uh, we continue on with our policies to uh, value and respect. Uh, okay, 
Uh, Atoy ni Bagares, may tanong dito. Uh, ano lang ang remedyo laban doon sa sinasabing state-sponsored terrorism? Well, sa batas po natin, ano, uh, of course, we have uh, laws, for instance, on dealing with arbitrary detention, violation of uh, the right to liberty. Um, I, I think that even in the anti-terror law, of course, there are provisions there uh, that uh, penalize violations of rights. Ano, uh, yung, uh, yung nga ng reklamo ng marami, eh, mas, ma mas mababa po yung... Uh, penalty for violating the rights of uh, citizens kesa po dun sa penalty uh, kapag uh, ang isang tao ay uh, napatunay na terorista no, or miyembro ng isang terror organization. Uh, ang nakikita nga po natin talaga dito, uh, we beg to disagree with uh, the good general. No? Hindi po isolated yung nangyayari no? dahil nakikita po natin yung reports mula apari hanggang hulo, sabi nga ng isang uh, kanta. No, uh, na yung nan, yung narrative na nanlaban sa tokang ay uh, nalilipat sa kung saan ano uh, actually yung PNP manual po marami pong provisions doon protecting uh, the rights of the accused ano uh, pero nakita po natin sa drug war na pag may pinapatay po at sinasabing nanlaban wala po hindi po ito sinasabit sa inquest ano pending po yung kaso sa Supreme Court uh, doon po laban po sa tokang dalawang kaso po yung petisyon ano uh, pero po, yung pong mga dokumento na sinabit po ng uh, PNP ay hindi po compliant doon sa order ng Supreme Court ano alam ko niyo sa tokang halimbawa tuwing meron pong namatay sa isang police operation pursuant to the PNP manual uh, of operations kailangan idan po ito sa inquest doon po sa 7000 na sinasabi ng PNP uh, na nanlaban deaths ano uh, ilan po doon ang duman sa inquest as required by uh, the criminal procedure as required by the PNP manual itself. Yun po yung tanong natin. Kasi kung, kung halos wala po ay natatakto tayo kasi ibig sabihin hindi po sinusunod ng PNP yung mismong PNP manual po nila. Okay. Uh, Attorney Romel, uh, kung pwede rin daw, may mga nagre-red tag, wala namang basihan, pwede bang kasuhan yung mga nagsasabing yan, yeah, komunista, terorista, yung mga yan? Uh, pwede po. Ano, yung problema ko kasi dito, ano, uh, alam po yung panahon ni uh, uh, Ginang Gloria Makapag-Arroyo, yung pong uh, uh, weapon of choice is uh, order of battle. Ano? Uh, meron pong order of battle. Pag nandun yung lista, pangalan mo sa listahan, after a few weeks or a few, after a few months, you're dead. Ano? Ngayon po, uh, red tagging. No? Uh, meron po tayong batas kasi, yung tinatawag na International Humanitarian Law. Ano? Uh, that IHL Act actually distinguishes between a combatant and uh, a non-combatant. Ano? Uh, Ang problema po dito kasi assuming na totoo po na isang legal front, hindi po sila combatants, ano? At iba po dapat ang treatment doon dahil meron po tayong batas tungkol po sa that distinguishes between an armed uh, a combatant with arms and someone who is not fighting in in in, uh, in any way, no? In, in in the battlefields and the law respects them. Ang problema ko kasi sa red tagging, ultimo pa sa civil, civilian po at na red tag ka. After a few days or a few months, you're dead. No? Ito po natin yan. Ang dami pong mga aktivista na na-red tag at hindi po nagtagal sila po ay namatay at hindi, pinatay. Hindi po natin alam po ano nangyari. Ano. Uh, uh, kaya po, uh, importante po talaga na tingnan po natin ito. Sanabi po ng uh, UN Special Rapporteur dati, yung order of battle is unconstitutional kasi by simply having your name uh, included in the list, you, you are already denied your rights. Ganun din po sa red tagging. Ano? Wala nang due process. You're already assumed to be a terrorist or uh, a member of the NPA without any court proceeding. And on that basis, you're killed. No? So, <laughs> hindi po tayo nagukulang sa batas prescribing that. Ang problema po, wala pong prosecution. Sabi po doon sa report ng UN Human Rights uh, Office of uh, the High Commission on Human Rights, ano? sa 7,000 deaths po, isa lang po ang prosecution kay Kian De Los Santos lang po. That's a mere drop in, in, in the sea, no? And that really uh, tells us that there's no effective remedy right now for human rights violations. And that has been declared by the Office of Commissioner Human Rights and 31 Special Rapporteurs of the UN. Okay. Nonoy, from your end, sa NUJP, how do you feel about it? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, sa amin hadain naman, ay gagawin namin yung dapat namin gawin. Uh, as journalists, we do our work. 
uh, regardless. No? And uh, yun lang, ang panawagan naman palagi ay sana respetuhin naman no? yung karapatan sa malayang pamamahayag at pagpapahayag. No? The right to uh, freedom of the press and freedom of expression. Dahil napakahalaga nito. And uh, they start stifling this. Eh, they start intimidating journalists into becoming silent. Eh, nakakatakot ito para sa demokrasya. Hindi lang para sa atin. No? It's, it's democracy at stake here. So, uh, tama yung na ano. Like, if we look at the law, there's section 9 na uh, inciting to commit terrorism. Yung nakasabi nga dito, eh, you can incite through speeches, proclamations, writings, emblems, banners, or other representations. So, ibig sabihin, eh, pwede kang, tama yung nabanggit kanina, pag may na-interview ka na grupo o tao na kinakabig na terorist, eh, trabaho natin ay eh, bigay, bigay yung lahat ng panig. Pag nailabas mo, can, you can easily be uh, cited for inciting to terrorism for merely reporting about that. So, sana naman, eh, reviewin at ayusin nila ito. Otherwise, eh, dihado tayong lahat. No? Hindi, lang, okay. hindi lang yung media, dihado yung taong bayan dito. Professor Danny Araw, sa ganitong sitwasyon, meron pa kayang mag-i-enroll sa MASCOM sa UP? <laughs> uh, meron naman. Uh, to be fair, uh, I think uh, the silver lining here is that journalism is in good hands. Uh, we're seeing uh, resistance uh, coming from various ranks uh, of journalism students. And uh, the main worry for me as a journalism educator is the continued red tagging of uh, certain uh, organizations. Uh, that would explain why the UP College of Mass Communication uh, has issued a strongly worded statement directed against uh, Pailade and the NTFL CAC because uh, Pailade uh, red tag uh, the Union of Journalists of the Philippines, uh, which is uh, one of the many organizations of UPCMC and is a member or uh, is a student arm, if I'm not mistaken, of NUJP as well. So, meron pa rin at merong mag enroll sa periodismo. And despite the dark times, uh, right now, uh, we will still continue teaching the highest normative standards of the profession, uh, telling uh, our students to be very careful but still become uh, responsible uh, journalists. Uh, may dahilan naman kasi para mag-alala, pero kung sama-sama tayo, wala namang dahilan para matakot. Mm -hmm. Raymond, kesa ko daw, ano bang nangyayari? Teka muna. Mabuti maliwanag to sa ating mga kababayan. Sino-sino ba yung nasa ko daw? Sino ang chairman well, ninyo? Well, ang chairperson namin is National Artist for Literature BNB ni Lumbera. Okay. Sino mga kasama? Yung, oh, makasama si former uh, uh, UPCMC Dean Roland Tolentino is our vice chairperson. Our secretary is in fact Professor Dati Araw. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, wal walang MPA. Sa, walang MPA sa board namin, mga kinikilalang mga tao ito sa academe at uh, saka sa panulat, uh, we don't understand why uh, they keep on uh, uh, retagging us just because masipag kami na magbalita nung uh, 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 stories from, uh, from the margins. Hindi lumalabas uh, ang ganoon. Oh, well, lumalabas, pero we would like to believe we are more consistent in coming up with stories from the margins okay. than the mainstream. Kasi the mainstream has to earn uh, through advertisements. Kami, wala kami ganung uh, restriction. So, pwedeng mas maging mal, uh, we are freer in choosing what stories to produce and publish. Uh, we hope that under the anti-terrorism law, hindi kami ma further constrict. Kasi in a democracy, you know the stories from below, from the margins, from the marginalized sectors and communities, are just as important as you know uh, press releases from the government. Okay. So uh, we would like uh, we we think that we contribute to um, uh, keeping democracy alive in our country. And sana. Uh, tignan ito ng uh, state forces at ng government bilang contribution sa, sa society at hindi uh, gawaing terorismo. Uh -huh. Okay, Virgil, your thoughts about the coming days, especially when this law gets to be enforced? Well, alam mo naman, inaantay lang ng mga mag-e-enforce ng law, eh, yung batas, eh. di ba? 
Pagnandyan yung bat- Alam mo ang batas eh nagiging eskusa, ano? Kailangan lang dumating yung batas, gagawin na nung mga uh, enforcers ang ang hindi lang kailangan nilang gawin kundi ang gusto nilang gawin. Eh yung walang batas nga eh nagagawa nila yun eh. Tama yung sabi ni ni Romel na huwag nating sabihin na isolated ang kasong ito. Unang taon pa lang nung uh, war on drugs si eh, 20 milyon pa tayo eh. 'Di ba? At ngayon, combatant ka na pagka nilagyan ka ng ano ng baril at sinabi ng laban ka. Kaya nakakatakot talaga ito eh. Uh, madaling ano eh, hindi mahirap imaginein kung paano mo palalabasin ng isang uh, inusenteng tao ay eh, terorista. It's so easy to do it. Nakita na natin yan eh. And especially now that uh, imagine the largest, farthest reaching broadcast organization pinatay ang kalayaan ng ganun na lamang. Walang justification ito. Ha? Arbitrarily, whimsically, ha? deprived of freedom. Unti-unti, ang sabi ni Maria Reza, sila ganun din eh, sa Rappler eh. In the beginning, yung inquiry, pero natigil na eh. Kasi tapos na eh. Pag nakita mo, if you look at the, at the mainstream media ngayon, the, ano, the, the reporting is becoming really even more timid than it used to be. Ito yung chill. Ito yung chill eh. Uh, pagka talagang meron kang ganyan, mag-iisip-isip ka eh. Hindi maaaring huwag mong sabihin uh, malakas ang loob mo, huwag mong sabihin matapang ka. Pagka ito ang kalaban mo ay Estado, and in this case, it's the state eh. You are up against a regime. Ang sinasabi ng regime nito, tatanggalin nila ng uli, ang mga oligarchy. Eh sila yung oligarchy eh. That because ang oligarchy is the rule of the few. Sila yun eh. It is a conspiracy. Tapos ngayon ipapasa nila sa iba. Napakadaling gawin yan eh. Hindi nga kailangan ng batas eh. Eh ngayon may batas pa. Anti-terrorism. At merong kongresista only to eager to do the bidding of, of the regime. Ganun ang nangyari sa ABS-CBN. Tinanggalan basta eh. Nakita mo ba kung ano, kung may justification? Wala. At ang sinasabi, ang kalayaan ng pamamahayag, freedom of expression, has nothing to do at all with the, court, with, with the case. Eh, yun lang, ang, yun lang ang applicable ditong principle. Freedom of the press, which derives from freedom of expression, which serves the right to know. Iyon lang ang ano, iyon lang ang ang applicable principle in this case. Kung ano-ano ang ang nilagay nila eh, kasi they have been avoiding the territory the territory of press freedom. But because, because they cannot win that fight because maliwanag sa constitution that you cannot abridge it. And what Congress did was precisely to abridge it. Kaya ayaw nila. Sa pag sinabi mo sa kanila press freedom, una sabi sa iyo Hindi kasali yan dito. Papano? They don't want press freedom to be tested against the Constitution because uh, they don't want broadcast franchising to be tested against freedom of the press. Matatalo yun eh. Ministerial function yun, hindi privilegio, diretso yun. Pinipilit nilang yun kaya sinasabi nilang walang ano, walang, walang pakialam ang freedom of the press diyan. Alam mo talagang na ano eh, ginugulo talaga nila eh. So kailangan talaga ito eh Okay. Hindi lang linawen labanan. Well, you survived martial law, okay? And you're surviving COVID. Do you think you can survive the anti-terror law? <laughs> it is not whether you should survive it eh. Ano, it's not whether you will. But you just have to to fight any draconian proposition. It is not for... I'm not afraid for myself. I'm not afraid for myself. I'm afraid for my children and for my grandchildren. It's the next generation. Eh. Kasi maaaring nung panahon natin, we may have committed some default. Eh. Kasi nagkaroon ng martial law. Eh. Kung hindi ba naman may default, mangyayari uli ito. Ibig sabihin, hindi natin natutuhan yung nangyari nung martial law. 
At least nung Marcel, no, maliwanag ang kalakaran eh. Ito hindi mo alam. Hindi mo alam dito kung anong nangyayari. Kasi una, walang Marcel oh. Pero effectively meron. Anong gagawin natin? Hindi okay. ba? Ma mahirap ito. You know, I can only look forward to us having lunch all over again, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that will come soon. No, no. Yes. Uh, bago tayo magtapos, uh, yung tungkol doon sa mga nagre-red tag, may kinasuhan na ba kayo? Uh, so far, wala. But we're gathering. Ano? We're gathering. And uh, yung problema actually, Melo, ganito. Madaling kasuhan niya ng libel eh. Kaso, alam naman natin, eh, our stand is to decriminalize libel. That's why we're not filing libel cases. Okay. Pero definitely, government officials or red tag should be liable for something even if it's just... Uh, the code of conduct of uh, government uh, of uh, government uh, employees and Official. no? oh. officials because you know you no one has the right to go around uh, accusing anyone of something as serious as that na parang baliwala sa kanila and then pag na call out sila sasabihin hindi deny nyo hindi deny wala nga silang proof eh you know they don't have proof simply lang naman if you have proof and it's a criminal offense go to court no one has gone to court so kumbaga it's ano it's a uh, Really, trial by, hindi nga publicity, trial by chismis eh. Pwede kang patayin dahil sa chismis. So, yun, yun, ang, ano, yun ang problema. And then, these, are, these are government officials doing that. No? So, anong, anong, talo, anong panalo natin dyan? Di ba? Anong panalo natin dyan? Pero, bagamat, sabi nga ni Berel, tama. Kung kahit sabihing medyo dihado na tayo, eh, kailangan pa rin lumaban eh. Kailangan pa rin, we have to stand up for our rights. Otherwise, if we cannot if we cannot stand up for our our rights, then tatanggalin lang nila sa atin yan. Wala na. Eh, ano reading mo sa ABS-CBN? I think Berel said it very well. They were just following the uh, the orders from above. Ganun lang, tuta lang. Tutang tutang maamo. Sinunod yung utos ng amo. Yun lang uh, naman ang nangyari doon. Okay. All right. Romel, meron bang legal remedies tayo nakikita to uh, probably uh, at least defang this ferocious law called anti-terrorism law of 2020. Well, uh, as you know, there are already at least eight pending petitions before the Supreme Court against the terror law. Uh, uh, the law will take effect uh, on July 18, but as I understand it, the IR will take some more time. No? But we, you know, uh, we do have a lot of cases saying from the Supreme Court saying that even if the IRR it's not there yet. It doesn't mean that the law is no longer in effect. I don't know. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, I, mean, I, I think that uh, we are still a government. I believe that we are still a government under the Constitution. And uh, we should really seek all the legal avenues uh, more, 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 um, um, more than ever. You know? that, uh, and that, that, re that really requires uh, cooperation. Uh, I don't wish to uh, cast a person in the PNP as an institution. No? But I think that's really the challenge for the PNP right now. Uh, public trust uh, uh, in, in the way the PNP has been implementing the law. No, it's yeah. an all-time law, especially because of uh, the pandemic, the way we, we've seen how police officers just arbitrarily uh, punish or detain people. And it's continuing. Um, uh, and, and, and that's also really the challenge for the, for the PNP because they have their manual. It's still there. I look at the website of the PNP, uh, the, and it's still there. No, the PNP manual. I think that was uh, crafted uh, with the help of Hans Seidel as well, if I'm not mistaken. No, uh, the, and uh, Hans Seidel, our partner in this uh, con conversation, has been supporting the PNP, uh, and 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 that's really the task for the for the PNP. The professionalization. It's a continuing challenge for the PNP. Uh, personally, I believe uh, you know that. Law enforcement is really needed for, for uh, to fight criminality, to fight terrorism. Uh, we need to see more professionalism uh, from the PNP. Okay. Uh, I... The shining moment of ano, the, yung, the security services should yes, look sir. back on the shining moment of 1986 when conscience was clear. At that moment, they should look back on it. Kailang kailangan natin ngayon yun eh. Pero ngayon kasi nagpe-pale yun eh. The shine uh, from that moment has been pay, been paling since then. Kailang bumalik yung the military, the police, and the other security services should all look back on their shining moment 
in 1986. Yeah, uh, some people were even saying they just voted according to conscience, but some people doubt whether they still have the conscience. No? Ay ba ibang quality ng conscience? Iba iba. Ano pa ko sa panon? Pero ang stability ka para kay General Banak bago tayo magtapos. Uh, ano rin po ang uh, binibigay nating instructions sa mga police na nasa checkpoints sapagkat uh, meron ikang uh, isang volunteer media reporter na nakakita na bibili ng gamot pero hindi pinayagan ng mga otoridad. Uh, ano rin bang orientation kaya ang binibigay natin sa ating mga tauhan? Yes, um, uh, uh, first of all, uh, let, let me uh, respond to the uh, comments. Um, yes. We we thank all the uh, the uh, comments and uh, the opinion uh, from our friends, and uh, we, we really value even uh, criticism, and uh, we take this uh, positively, uh, so that we can uh, continue on with our uh, task of maintaining and pursuing uh, professionalism and uh, discipline uh, within the ranks, and uh, even our internal cleansing program that is the weeding out of all these uh, rogue cops is uh, ongoing and uh, uh, we will endeavor to really uh, continue on uh, with our uh, uh, task to continue to professionalize the organization uh, that is worthy of the trust and confidence of our people. And uh, in so far as the uh, checkpoints uh, are concerned, um, we are maintaining the implementation of the guidelines set forth by the IATF. And um, we have even uh, reduced now the number of these uh, checkpoints. And uh, what we're doing now are only random um, checking of uh, uh, people, especially uh, in wearing of face masks. These uh, uh, minimum health protocols we are uh, enforcing along with the uh, local ordinances. I'm not so sure on uh, on the specific incident that uh, you've mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. Mello, but uh, we'll look uh, into this and uh, ensure that uh, uh, our our people would have a quick and safe pass passage along our uh, checkpoints. Yeah, thank you very much. Professor, what do you see? Well, Maybe you want to oh. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, we will still uh, soldier on and ensure that uh, the people uh, will get uh, the information that they need uh, so that they can think critically and they can uh, act uh, accordingly. Uh, the anti-terrorism law is definitely uh, unacceptable insofar as the practice of journalism is concerned. And the basic challenge right now for journalists would be not just to report uh, the events, but also to assert uh, our basic freedoms. Uh, in the absence of freedom, uh, we have to remember that it is our collective responsibility to fight for it because we cannot practice journalism uh, without genuine democracy and without press freedom. So we will still continue to fight, and fight is the order of the day. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Attorney Rumel, uh, may trabaho pa ba ang mga abogado pag uh, pinatupad na yung anti-terrorism law? Alam po ninyo, uh, Melo, ano, kahit po sa, sabi nga lang, kahit sa impyerno may abogado. Ano. Uh, uh, lalo na ngayon, no, na, yun nga, maraming uh, challenges sa ating pong batas. Uh, uh, nitong itinakaraang araw, May mga bago tayong mga abogado naman ano at nakikita natutuwa po tayo nakikita natin sa Twitter no yung mga bagong abogado nagti-tweet sila sa kanilang social media page at sinasabi nila na uh, gusto nila makatulong sa uh, pagpapatupad ng karapatan ng ating mga mamamayan no uh, syempre kailangan ng mga abogado ngayon talaga kahit nga lang sa pagsabi ng opinion no kung ano yung uh, naaayon sa saligang batas uh, uh, importante yun para sa mga abogado at yung PNP marami ding abogado dahil meron pong PNP legal service ano uh, at sa AFP merong human rights office importante na palakasin po no this is important that these institutions in the PNP and the AFP are actually strengthened through capacity building and I, I think it should become a SOP for PNP that every time there's an operation they should have a lawyer telling them how not to, how to how uh, not how to violate the law but to comply with the law uh, that's that's really something that we need in the PNP and okay. the yeah. right now. 
Uh, I think, well, let me just uh, ask you uh, how different our anti terrorism law with our other Asian neighbors because it's always been referred to na mabubuhit pa yung batas natin dito sa Philippines eh. kaysa doon sa batas sa ibang bansa. Ano po ang inyong masasabi? Ah, ako ba yung tinatanong mo, uh, Melo? Yeah, si, si attorney. Uh, uh, actually, no, yung sa ibang bansa, no, I think actually one of our law is one of the worst because it allows our our government to detain someone for for 14 days without charge. No? Uh, a comparable law maybe in the UK, uh, it's uh, it's it's for uh, 48 hours, and then they have to, to to seek an extension before a judge, no, for increments of seven days. In the Philippines, as has been noted, no, not even during Marshall did we have a law like this no, uh, that uh, allows you to be detained uh, uh, for, sev for 14 days without uh, any judicial intervention. So basically with this law, it's, it's worse than Marshall law. No? So I don't think uh, we compare uh, <laughs> and uh, if, if we look at our anti-terrorism uh, law with uh, those you will find in other jurisdictions. Yeah. Uh, yung bang dahilan kaya nag-abogado pa, umalis ka sa pagiging mamamahayag? <laughs> Hindi po, ano, uh, papag na wala ka sa kumagawa sa gabi, ano, dahil sa traffic, nanonood na ako ng sine, kaya nag-decide ako siguro mag-law school na lang ako para magamit ko ng maayos yung oras ko sa gabi. Ah, okay. So, yun pala yun. Nagkakakwento pa ba kayo ni Secretary Harry Roque every now and then? Attorney Romel? Hello. Ay, of course, no. Uh, hindi naman nawawala yon na mag-uusap, no. Dahil dati ko boss sa uh, ating pong uh, press secretary, ang matagal, uh, no. Magsama kami sa Central ng 15 years, ano. Ah, uh, okay. So napapagkwentuhan ko ba itong anti-terrorism law na ito? <laughs> uh, of, of late, hindi pa kami nag-uusap in the last uh, few months, no. Not about this one at least. Uh, thank you, Attorney Romel. Berhel, Pahabol? Yes, please. Yes. 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 Ano ba anong ano ba magagawa natin? Ang tawag ko nga rito forced good tayo rito eh. Kailangan labanan mo kasi hindi po pwedeng umupo ka na lang sa Santa Be, no? Pabayaan mo lahat ito ay eh, mangyari dahil meron tayong responsibility sa susunod na mga henerasyon eh. To a certain extent naka-default na nga yung my own generation, marami nag-default nung panahon ng martial law eh. And but I can see them now na nakikita nila siguro ano uh, trying to make up trying to redeem themselves ako mismo Melo I have very puny run-ins with with the martial law government ano konti lang yun sa akin at saka magaang lang yun di ka mukha nung iba kong mga kaibigan na talagang na torture eh uh, pero doon makikita mo na talagang kailangan mo kasing laban kung hindi mag kaya nga nangyari ito uli dahil doon eh nakalimutan natin yung nangyari nung, nung mga panahon na yon at nakalimutan natin yung mga misplaced values um, misplaced consciences uh, hindi na natin nakita kaya meron lang isang lumitaw na kamukha nito ang yeah. daling ano ang daling mag ang daling magkumuha ng kennel of lapdogs hindi mo nakita sa lahat ng institusyon na co-opt agad eh uh, nak nakakatakot nga bakit napakadali ano si Kreto kaya Alam mo yung institutions kasi because of the nature of our setting, of our political setting, tayo kasi ang operating culture dito is one of patronage. Eh. If the operating culture is one of patronage, you cannot expect the institutions of democracies to take root. That's why very frail. The institutions have all this time been so frail that they were easy to struck down. They're easy to strike down. Kaya nangyayari ngayon, uh, hindi natin napalakas eh. Hindi natin napalakas. And alam mo yan, yan yung, yung, yung um, 
of, uh, yun yung culture of patronage at iyan din kulturang yan ang nagpalawak ng division, ng gap ano, between rich and the poor, yung wealth and opportunity gap dahil dyan. So marami tayong inilalaban ngayon. Nagkaroon pa ng pandemic. Pagkatapos kinapitalize, inexploit yung destruction ng pandemic para gawin sa atin ito. Talagang napakalaki ng ano, napaka, napakalaking laban ng ating hinaharap eh. Ah, okay. Uh, before closing, we'd like to greet our audience. Kasama nga sa mga nanood, sina Attorney Oliver Olaybal mula sa Albay. Si Malu Mariano mula sa California. Uh, tapos, yung iba pa nating mga kaibigan, sina Liz uh, Bislig Paraon, Sister Mary Jan Manansan, Roland Simbulan. Sabi nga ni Nuno Espina, the usual suspects. <laughs> Pati si Ginong Abilino. Zapanta ng Philippine Airlines ng araw. Uh, pahabol natin kay General Banak. May pahabol po ba kayo? Uh, meron kayong mensahe sa ating mga kababayan? Please go ahead. Yes, uh, Kuya Melo. Um, uh, yun po sa panawagan natin sa ating mga kababayan na patuloy pa rin na uh, supportahan ang ating pong, uh, uh, pag-implement ng mga minimum health protocol uh, para labanan ng COVID-19. At uh, tinitiyak po natin na uh, kung anumang mga pag-aabuso na maaaring nakumit ng ating mga personnel ay uh, kaagad po na ipagbigay alam at uh, isumbong kaagad nang ito ay mabigyan ng uh, uh, tamang responde at maimbestigahan at uh, makasuhan na sa ilalim ng ating batas. Uh, and the PNP continues to be committed to upholding the rule of law and uh, we value uh, life and uh, respect human rights. As an institution, we continue to endeavor to uh, maintain and pursue professionalism and uh, maintain discipline uh, within the ranks. So we thank the public for the continued support. And uh, uh, the matter on the anti-terrorism bill, we, we leave it now to uh, the Supreme Court to determine what will be the final provisions. And uh, we will be ready to implement whatever the IRR will be crafted and uh, also we assure the public that all the measures uh, put in place in that, uh, uh, in that law and that the IRR uh, will be properly um, and uh, obeyed by our um, uh, personnel. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Kuya Melo, and to all the guests this morning, uh, thank you very much. Magandang araw po at uh, nais ko pasalamatan si Maria Teresa Habitan, kasama rin natin. Si Maria Belen Ilao, si Angelito Barroso, si Donna Pasqua at si Professor Betty Baronia. Ang ating closing remarks ay eh, mula kay Ariel Sibilino ng uh, Philippine Press Institute. Ariel? Uh, simple lang po yung closing remarks. Actually, dapat wala ng closing remarks. Uh, on behalf of the PPA Board, we profusely thank Her Excellency Ambassador Anki Refenstahl. HSF res resident representative Gats Heineke, our panelists, very able panelists, our moderator, Melo Acuna, and all our participants. Again, we reiterate our call for vigilance and uh, critical engagement. Um, PPA po will be joining other media organizations in support and solidarity for whatever position against any curtailment um, of press freedom. Maraming salama po, and we see you every month that's going to be every Wednesday, third Wednesday of every month. Uh, obviously starting this month and then um, August until December. Thank you very much, everyone. Keep safe. All right. Nais kong pasalamatan muli si na Jamela Lindogan, ang Pangulo ng Foreign Correspondents Association of the Philippines, si Professor Danilo Araw, si Attorney Romel Bagares, isang periodista ang naging abogado, si General... Uh, Bernard Bana, kasama rin natin si Professor Clarita Carlos, who had to leave earlier for another meeting. Si Nonoy Espina mula sa NUJP, Ginoong Berhel Santos, at si Raymond Villanueva ng Kodao. So maraming maraming salamat po. Please keep safe. We have more time to discuss better and deeper issues. God bless us all. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thank day. You. Have a nice day, Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a nice Morning. day. Morning. Morning. Bye. Good morning.